Hello everyone. Welcome to another session of Evolve by Evolve. My name is Evolve Young. And with me today I have Renee. Hello. <laughs> so today Renee is our guest and she's going to be telling us about our Journey. So do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah. Hi everyone. I'm excited to be here. My name is Renee. I am a certified holistic health coach, a baby loss mom, and a stage two breast cancer survivor. I'm excited to just have the conversation today. Thank you. Um, you did mention that you're a breast cancer survivor, mm -hmm. um, stage two. So do you mind telling us how it started? Like how did you start? At what point did you realize that you had cancer? Um, what were the symptoms? Mm -hmm. So, um, almost a year ago, actually, it was in September, I was taking a shower. And after I got out the shower, you know when you go to just put lotion on your entire body, I felt like a small little lump, very small, like the size of a pea. But it was uncommon for me because I know my body pretty well, and so I'd never felt something like that before. It was on my right breast, literally in between, like, um, you know, the breast and the armpit. So it's very, very tiny. And I worked at a fertility clinic at the time. So, you know, I went to work. I let one of the girls know, actually our nurse practitioner. Um, so I scheduled a guy an appointment with her. And she also did like a breast check. Um, she felt what I felt. So she gave me a referral to further get it looked at. Um, so that's when I went from maybe a couple days later, um, getting a mammogram, and then I think my mammogram turned into like a biopsy. Um, so after all of that was said and done, waiting for the results to come back, um, about a week later I got the results that it was positive for breast cancer. And the crazy thing about that is they'll tell you that, but then they don't tell you anything else. So then it's also like a waiting game to just figure out like, well, what level of breast cancer? What stages? What do the stages mean? Like, you you know, I kind of felt like my world instantly stopped and that I was dying. Like, that's literally the thoughts that came in my head. Um, and my co-workers, well, my doctor at work at the time and my nurse practitioner were the ones that gave me the results um, because the hospital contacted them. Um, and then we just you know, talked about everything. And so I just went home and I literally took the evening to myself. I was upset, my emotions were everywhere. Um, but one thing that calms me down is nature. Like I love being outside, so peaceful. It's so relaxing and so serene. So once I kind of got a grip on things, um, I ended up just going outside and walking around the park for like hours. And um, that, was, that was that day when I got the news. And that was September 28th of 2021. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very recent. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me ask: Did you do you have did you have any family member that had cancer before? Yeah, so my grandmother passed away from lung cancer, um, unfortunately, and on my other grandmother's side, my father's mom, um, her sisters passed away from cancer. So breast cancer specifically, one of her sisters, and one was diagnosed. But after doing all of the genetic testing, um, they said that I'm not a carrier of it and it's not a gene carried in my family because my father's mother was so, her sisters are so far removed from me. Um, so that, you know, ruled that out. So basically my doctor just said like, this was just kind of like a one-off situation because cancer commonly doesn't run in my family. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing I'm learning now. Because I thought that if someone has cancer, they have like a genetic history. I didn't know that it's going to actually happen to someone that doesn't even have it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. It's been a lot of learning for sure. Um, but the testing is just so helpful because it th there's different variations of tests, but they give you a personal genetic counselor. And this is something that, um, honestly, once I tested positive, like my girlfriends all also just went ahead and did this genetic testing because they just wanted to know in general. But yeah, this is a test that anybody can do and there's different levels to it, but you can just get an understanding generally of what runs in my family or through my bloodline and what doesn't. So that is something that I recommend just as a, just so for, you know, personal awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So when you found out what changed for you, how did you react to the news and what were your first thoughts when you found out? Oh. Whew. Okay, so when I first found out, um, I had been holistic health coaching for about five years. Um, experiencing my son, the loss of my son, like I shared with you when I was 36 weeks pregnant, that triggered the way that I chose to heal myself through that trauma. So that's when I started going deep into like holistic health and wellness and got certified um, and went through different nutritional courses. So in my mind, that was kind of still like my first plan of attack. Um, more so like what herbs can I also incorporate in my routine already to like better support my body. So I connected with a herbalist here in Atlanta, a friend connected us. So I went into his shop, talked to him, let him know about my diagnosis. And then he just recommended more things that I didn't already have. So I really started focusing on just nutrition because I know how important it is and essential for helping fighting off ailments, illnesses, diseases, and everything like that. So that was really my first plan of attack because my mind naturally goes to like problem solving mm -hmm. and I think I kind of tackled this the same way. Mm -hmm. okay, you mentioned that uh, you, the loss of your child, was that, that was before this time? Yes, yep, that was five years in 2017. Mm -hmm. So how did your family and friends react to the news? Um, did you feel, did you also feel, uh, I mean, you mentioned that already, that after the loss of your child, you were a bit more open with you. So, yeah, but how did your um, family and friends react to the situation? Mm -hmm. And was it something you just, you know, was it something you just, were you comfortable talking about it? Mm -hmm. You know, right after that message. Yeah, so I, it's a great question. Um, I like trickled it on them. I didn't tell everyone right away. Like I wanted to get to um, some type of level point where I could just fully process it myself and, and say it without feeling upset and emotional and crying. So my mom and dad were the first people um, I told and a friend of mine at the time as well. Um, and then from there, I probably gave myself like a week to just be personal with myself. And then I started sharing it with my community and sharing it with my friends and family. And everybody was shocked. They were extremely shocked because how well I take care of myself, the holistic lifestyle that I had, you know, obtained and been living, um, the non-toxic lifestyle that I had obtained and been living too. So I guess that's just to say, that no one's exempt from cancer. Even me working in healthcare and having that familiarity and awareness, like no one's exempt from it, unfortunately, but I still do believe that there's like measures we can take to better support our bodies and better support the choices that we make from a nutritional standpoint, from a wellness standpoint and so forth. So I still believe that to be true. And I just decided to take those actions in combination with like you know, the approach to chemotherapy. So I still did both a holistic aspect and like a Western medicine aspect. Mm -hmm. So, um, just a quick question. Are you a vegetarian? No. Okay, so, okay. Because when you said you believe the holistic lifestyle, I just got to ask that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, not you know, Vegetarian is not holistic, or like, <laughs> it's not necessarily holistic, but I just wanted to Yeah, no, that's that a great question. Thing. Yeah, no, very valid question. Because some people on their journey will um, take out meats. Mm -hmm. Like commonly in general, I would have days of kind of being more vegan or vegetarian, um, just as my personal process. Um, but during this process, chemo specifically, I knew my body needed protein. So I also believe personally from my learnings and teachings um, of just like, a whole foods nutrient dense approach. So not removing those aggressive categories, but finding um, the commonality support between like your proteins, carbs, and fats. Mm -hmm. So that you can still have a holistic aspect approach to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me about your chemo experience. How was the journey mentally, spiritually, emotionally? Whew. That's okay, yeah, deep sigh. Because chemo, <laughs> I, I personally think it's the hardest part of 
navigating cancer because it's so aggressive on your body and it's so draining. Like um, I would have, I would go every Friday. So in the beginning I was going once a week. There were sometimes weeks where my blood cells, uh, my white blood cells were so low that if I did treatment, it would pretty much kind of wipe me out. So there were some weeks where I could not be treated and I'd have to wait I'd have to wait until, you know, things like accumulated again. Um, but commonly I'd be there on Fridays for at least like six to seven hours um, getting treatment. And it was the aggressive treatments, at, you know, at the beginning with like Taxol, um, Keytruda, I think Carboplatin. I can't remember all the other names, but that's when I started to lose my hair, lose my eyebrows, lose my eyelashes. Um, then my fingernails started to become dark. Um, some people do experience neuropathy in their hands and feet, which are, um, it's like a nerve, the best way I know how to say it is almost like nerve damage. Because my father has neuropathy from being a diabetic, where his nerves have been damaged and now it's like his feet just ache and hurt and tingle. So there's different side effects from different uh, medications, you know, as you would know. Um, so everyone reacts differently, but luckily I didn't experience that part specifically, but I would have like this ringing noise in my head some days and I just felt like it was from all the medication, you know, like all of those drugs that they're just pumping into your body. Um, but I also did the drugs in combination with like my herbs and things like that. So I made sure to just partner with my doctor about that because some herbs are counteractive um, to certain chemo medications that you're taking. So just partnering with my doctor to just confirm like these specific things I can still take and do. But yeah, it was long. I started like November 2021 and then finished, um, I think April 2022. Went through my, you know, surgery and radiation and so forth. Um, and then now I'm just on like the maintenance um, parts of chemo. So I just get Keytruda once every three weeks now and I only have like a handful of treatments left. Mm -hmm. So I was still doing chemo then when you did um, reach out to me back in March and I had the double mastectomy in April. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So you did mention you did a double mastectomy and then you did construction next year. Yeah. So um, I have two more questions. Mm -hmm. So I know people that, you know, have breast cancer and they don't do mastectomy, right? I know it's a thing of choice. So what really made you, because you, you mentioned that cancer doesn't run the family. So what made you come to that decision that you want to do mastectomy? Yeah, so there was a few things in talking with my surgeon. One, the cancer was only in one breast, the, white, the right breast. So I technically could have done a lumpectomy, but it was stage two, meaning that it had spread to my lymph nodes, so under my armpit. So considering the amount of lymph nodes that he wanted to take out and the amount of like um, cells that were of concern, my breast just would not have looked the way that I wanted to doing a lumpectomy. So in my mind, because I am still young, I want as much as possible my body to look like my natural body, even considering all the changes. Um, I decided to just do the double mastectomy because I just personally didn't want to worry about one boob looking one way and one boob looking another. Um, I know the ladies that I have met that went through this journey, they have already had their children or they have their husband or, you know, things like that. And I'm a single, still a single woman, not married, no living children. And I still desire those things for myself and still want to be, you know, able to still feel like I can have that experience for myself. So I wanted to still do the double mastectomy and then just get the implants because for me, that would just look as close as to natural since I couldn't have my natural breasts anymore. So speaking about you wanting to do, did you like freeze your eggs? Or... 
I did, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm grateful that I worked at a fertility clinic at the time, so I was able to do, yeah, and I was able to do two rounds of fertility preservation right away. Um, the doctors that I worked with were just great and supportive. So yeah, I ended up freezing two rounds of my eggs um, pretty much like a week after my diagnosis. And I did a double stem, so meaning I did it back to back um, just to try to get it done in time before I started chemo. Mm -hmm. I can't stress how important the good support system is. Um, what would you like to say to other survivors and families that are also going through the same process? Mm. I would definitely tell um, both survivors and the newly diagnosed to make sure you have a strong community that's backing you and with you. Um, I also understood well learned rather that some of the people that started on the journey with me didn't end the journey with me. So some people came and gone, have come and gone through the process, um, which is okay for me. I think just setting your boundaries, being clear on what healthy boundaries are for you, um, how you would like people to communicate with you. I know it can sound like a lot, and I know we try to not be a burden on other people, but this is something where you really need other people's support to just make you feel uplifted and encouraged and be able to fight the fight. Because it, it's, in my mind, I literally see it as like, it's 50-50, it's life or death. There's like no in-between. Um, so you're either fighting to live or, you know, we, I, I don't believe any of us want to die. I understand it is exhausting though, and sometimes it can feel so so easy to, to just give up because you're going through so much internally, physically, and like mentally. But being rooted in having a foundation in something, for me, that's my spiritual belief, my relationship with God, my personal faith carried me through this entire time. So having a strong foundation in what your faith-based belief is and then ensuring that you vet the community that you need to support you and vocalize your needs. Um, something else that I, I notice people commonly say is let me know if you need anything. But I started to tell people like sometimes I don't have the strength to let you know or the strength to call you or the strength to reach out to you. Sometimes I don't want to text. I don't want to be on the phone, you know, because my brain is tingling from the chemo drugs or my body is fatigued because I was at treatment for eight hours and my stomach is nauseous because I can't eat or I'm a throw up, but then I'm weak because I can't eat. So no, I don't always have the ability to just reach out and let you know. And I know people mean well when they ask that, um, but it's okay to just say like, maybe if you can anticipate my needs, that would be helpful. If you know I have chemo this week and you know I'm juicing, maybe just send some juices to my house or you know something like that. That really goes a long way. Um, but that's also just a part of like communicating your needs and like really vetting your community support and just letting them know how they can support you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. That's all the questions I have for now. So we're going to go into the next phase, which is the makeup session, and we will be right back. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
know. Miss Nigeria, <laughs> were you really? So I'm actually a rain quick hell. Oh. Okay, I'm currently Miss Nigeria. I told you I went for a pageant, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm currently Miss Nigeria for the Women of Achievement pageant. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so I'm representing Nigeria. And, um, <sighs> okay, sorry, I'm trying to get myself together. Okay, so I already told you either why I started this platform and I just want to thank you for being so supportive, for granting me this interview and I want to encourage you and I just want to let you know that I'm always here, you know, I've become really, really good friends with a lot of people that are sat on this chair, you know, and I don't want you to be an exception. I told you earlier that now we're friends. Yes. <laughs> It's, it's, it's not a question. I'm imposing myself on you. I'm imposing myself. I'm imposing myself, but I really do appreciate you. And um, I do all this because I told you my story. I I don't have. I can't imagine, or I can't even say that I know or I feel half of what you guys have felt, you guys have actually gone through that journey. I've only had a scare and it was just a scare. Okay, but you know, I I I felt the need and the this gives me a lot of joy. Like I derive joy doing it, basically. This is my passion and you know you never can tell it's a small platform now, but you never can tell yeah. who this is going to encourage. Give me emotional. I was like, I gotta hold all this in. <laughs> you know, we can tell who is going to encourage. But yeah, it's a small platform now. But by the grace of God, I have hopes and my prayer is that it's going to evolve to some something, Absolutely. you know, really big and beautiful. So as one of the pioneers of Evolve by Evolve, I want to say thank you. Thank you. And first of all, before I go, okay, no, this will come later. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. I have a gift for you. Oh, this is so sweet. And okay. we're going to be crowning you. Oh. <laughs> I get a crown too. I told you that I have something for you. That is not, it's not subtle at all. Oh, that is not. And you just have to accept it. That is not aggressive. Yes. This is so sweet. So, oh, just later. <laughs> From one reigning queen to another. Thank you. This is for you. Wait, let me adjust this. <laughs> Thank this you. you. It's so sweet. Oh. Okay, I don't know if I picked that one. <laughs> okay, we'll take and, it. <laughs> um, do you mind opening your. Yeah. So, can you grab this? Which one? This first one? Yeah. You can look at the rest of the Oh, okay. So this is one of I'm gonna put this on for you. Oh, cute. This is just it's a souvenir to always remember oh, me. Oh yes. And so remind you that we're connected. <laughs> <laughs> the reminder. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. Okay, so where's your right? Right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's go with this. And what it says is Warrior Queen. Oh. Just to remind you that you're a warrior. Yes. No matter the circumstance you face in life. Oh, thank you. You will always be a winner, you will always overcome. Mm. I live by a motto that says, Blessed to be a blessing. Mm. And I believe that God has blessed me mm. to be able to bless other people. Mm. And this is just my little way of doing it. <clears throat> so, this is so cute. Thank you, Rainbow. Thank you. Oh, a little crown to come off. <laughs> <laughs> this is so sweet. <laughs> oh, yes. and you're a queen, so please, can I get your autograph? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I oh, always try to get shirts. autograph from everyone I interview, so anywhere is fine. 
Oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Renee. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel so special and cleaned <laughs> up, girl. Yes. We ride so, down 285 with this crown on. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much thank, thank you so much for you. doing this with me and um yeah we're gonna go into the yeah. picture 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 yes. <laughs> thanks so much everyone thank for you watching and we'll see you guys in my next video oh, bye. bye take care <laughs>